Good afternoon, this is the latest tropical update on Tropical Storm Lisa. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone and making decisions. Please consult the National Hurricane Center for the latest information for where you're at. So here's a look at the latest satellite imagery on Tropical Storm Lisa and we can see with what the system is currently exhibiting and that is with a very poor defined inner core structure that has really failed to develop. We thought something was forming overnight last night due to the convective maximum period but since then we're seeing this more blobier effect going on. It is possible we might start seeing another round of deep convection that might I try to close off somewhere right here but this is probably slightly tilted due to a little bit just a hair of westerly shear that is currently hitting it on the western side of the system preventing any deep convection to organize another way we could look at this is on the mesofloater satellite imagery another way just to look at it on a different perspective and we can see that there is where the center might be located and you can definitely get an idea that the deep convection is slightly offset from the core this system is trying to get organized it's trying but each time it does there's either some dry air that gets ingested into the system or there is a little bit of shear that prevents uh, a better well stacked vortex that has failed to do so already we might start to see in the beginnings of maybe an inner core structure that we can see that it's trying to form on there but it's very too early hard to say if that is indeed developing at this time but either way right now lisa is a formidable tropical storm with winds of 60 miles an hour we had a recon mission that flew through the system uh, and made four passes through lisa and we can see that uh, of course to the south of the system a very poorly defined center uh, with very light loose um, westerly winds and you can see the wind barbs here on their latest pass really not much of definition as far as winds do uh, go but however on the northern and northeastern side there has been a pretty good fetch of tropical storm force winds that of being about 60 miles an hour with a pressure that is remaining fairly steady. It did drop though from about 1,008 millibars to about 1,004, which is a four millibar drop in pressure or about a millibar an hour in air pressure falls uh, throughout its um, adventure throughout the system. So we are seeing a slightly strengthening system, but this has not been reflected very much here on the wind barbs to the south where very loose, weak westerly winds have been found. It might be even a secondary low that uh, may have formed briefly, making this a little uncertain in terms of exactly where it's headed. So now, what is uh, the infrared satellite imagery showing here, as or the microwave, we should say? And we can see there is our storm roughly right there and you can see actually you know what it may be a little further to the north it's probably right here so we can see a lot of the deep convection here is offset to the east side of the system with a little bit of thunderstorm activity and showers on the western side so this is still a little bit innocuous it's a little bit uh weighted on one side again due to just only a little bit of shear um and for this given period, you know, you don't want a lot of shear on a just a formative type of system, a system that's forming and strengthening because when you get shear that's this, um, it's not, it doesn't have to be very strong, by the way, to actually get an offsetted vortex. And so, uh, Lisa, what I'm trying to say here is Lisa is trying to get better organized, but, uh, 10 knot, maybe 15 knot of shear is all it takes just to kind of offset things just a little bit. So as of the 11 o'clock advisory, we should get a new update here from the NHC in the next couple of hours. And as it stands right now, winds are at 60 miles an hour. It is moving to the west at 14. It is expected to be a hurricane by tomorrow morning. That's why there are hurricane warnings just to the north of Honduras, as well as getting close to Belize under a hurricane watch at this time. We got tropical storm warnings all the way down there in 
Honduras itself into the Yucatan and Play del Carmen area of Mexico. Just to the south of you, you are under tropical storm warnings and hurricane watches. This is a system to please take seriously just because it is not impacting the United States. Well, we have viewers that do watch this from Mexico as well. And yeah, that does the trick. So, as far as key messages do go for Tropical Storm Lisa, hurricane conditions are expected in the islands of Honduras early Wednesday and possible along the coast of Belize by Wednesday afternoon. Hurricane conditions are possible in eastern Yucatan in the Hurricane Watch area Wednesday afternoon. You could pause the video, read this because this will I will bore the heck out of you all if we spend too much time on this. All right, so again, there are your key messages. We're talking about flash flooding, strong um, winds, maybe some water spouts too. So keep that in mind with tropical systems. So the arrival time of tropical storm forest winds on Lisa will be eight in the morning if you're on Belize, if you're in the rest of the portions there of the Northern Yucatan portion of Mexico. Also Guatemala, if you're in Honduras, between about 2 in the morning and 8 in the morning on Wednesday. So literally less than 24 hours from now, you could be seeing tropical storm force winds arriving on the island or on the mainland there with a 90 to 100% chance of um, that of occurring. Okay, so we're now going to take a look here at the computer model guidance because there has been some changes as far as our forecast goes. Just a little bit, not a whole lot. So for first of all, this afternoon on the GFS, we can see our ridge is orientated like this. By the way, this is three layers in one. So in the rainbow colors, we have vorticity. You can't miss that very much. It's, it pops out to you very easily. And then all these lines of isobars or isotherms or heights, and in other words, are our heights of geopotential height. This is another way of showing where the ridges are, where the troughs are. And so Lisa is right down here underneath this ridge that is to the north and mainly kind of to the northwest. However, the ridge is orientated in a way that the system is likely to move kind of in this general direction is um, versus a ridge being orientated like this where the system is likely to be forced right into say Honduras because of the ridge orientated like that. So instead we have a whole different setup here where we have the ridge to the northeast of Lisa. That's gonna allow Lisa to again, generally move towards the west northwest at a pretty good pace, not very slow, not very fast as it, as it remains underneath this high as you can see here on the geopotential height you can see a secondary high too is located here and so there's a little bit of a steering influence here from the southeast and that's why the system is likely to feel that pattern um, going forward as it makes landfall by uh, Wednesday afternoon. On the H wharf model we can see how this evolves a little differently there's been some um, some ambiguity ambiguities as far as how strong this might get because we're dealing with a system that yet has to develop an inner core structure in order for things to or in order for this system to really intensify quicker got to get that inner core we got to get an eye wall structure that forms that has not really happened yet and so it is very questionable to see if the system is going to be even this strong when it makes its way on shore here say near honduras guatemala as well as mexico uh, just to the south there play del carmen okay by wednesday afternoon with pressures at 967 millibars but even so it doesn't hit your area directly while well, there's gonna be a lot of rain on this especially on the northern side of the system very intense rainfall, water spouts, strong winds, maybe uh, certainly some storm surge flooding and some high surf as you typically find with tropical systems. And there's that rain band that could really produce some water spouts as Lisa makes its way on shore. But again, depending on how strong this will actually be will depend on, again, the evolution of how this structure evolves. Right now, we're not seeing much of an inner core structure that is forming, likely due to some 
some dry air and shear that is getting in the way of things with Lisa. But if Lisa is able to mix that dry air out and kind of move the shear out of the way, then we could see a quickly developing intensifying system as it moves near the Belize area of Mexico in the next 24 to 36 hours. But again, please make sure you have your hurricane plans in place because again, this is a very dangerous situation. We're talking hurricane warnings, hurricane watches on Belize, as well as just to the north of Honduras. There are some of the islands underneath that hurricane warning. So this is to be taken pretty seriously with storm surge flooding, fresh water flooding, as well as water spouts. Um, and maybe a few tornadoes even on shore, depending on how this all evolves, and high surf and rip currents. So please um, heed my advice because I'm only here to doing what I can best for you all. But in order to get the latest information on this system, you have to subscribe or please consider subscribing to get the latest. Share this and also like the video. And yeah, um, check out our Weather United Discord server for more information on this also. Okay, but that's going to do with this video. Thank you all for watching.